This little adorable tomato looking fruit. The plant that this comes from was once used to prepare human meat for consumption. This is the cannibal tomato. The scientific name on this is Solanum uporo, but an older scientific name for it that isn't used quite so much anymore is Solanum anthropohagrum. Probably saying that wrong, but if you take anthropohagrum and you translate that, you get eat with man. Now I will warn you that in this video I'm going to give some accounts on how this was used and how to prepare human flesh. So if you don't want to hear some pretty grisly details on how to eat your own enemies, you may want to skip to this point in the video. You've been warned. In August of 1856, a Dr. McDonald and a Reverend Waterhouse were invited into a small village in Fiji that still practiced cannibalism. The book Viti, an account of a government mission to the Vetian or Fijian Islands in the years 1860 to 61, that's a good title, gives an account of how this was used. The unfortunate man was then thrust head foremost into the boiling pot. The greater part of the slain was eaten at Navua but parcels of the revolting food were distributed amongst the chief's dominions in the mountains. On the morning of the 30th of August, after a little parley with the chief Nalumatua, the knee of a dead body already cooked was brought to our bureau. The bones had been removed by an incision made on one side, and the whole was carefully wrapped up in banana leaves so as to be warmed up each day in order to preserve it. The reason why cannibalism was practiced is that it's a total desecration of someone's body. So if you really wanted to enact revenge on your enemies, this was the best way to do it. Even long after cannibalism had completely stopped in Fiji, the insult, I will eat you, was used like you would say F you to somebody. There will be some more gory history in a minute, but right now I want to take a break to try this raw. It's not normally eaten raw, so uh, this is probably not going to taste very good. Yeah, you may notice that doesn't look like the best tasting uh, tomato you've ever had. That's because this is not really a tomato. This is a different species, and people liken it more to a type of eggplant than a tomato. Oh. No. Ugh. I mean... Tastes like eggplants, but tremendously bitter. I'm not exactly filled with confidence about this thing tasting good, even if it is cooked, because this plant wasn't really used with human meat to make it taste better. It was used to aid in the digestion of human meat. So there is a misconception a lot of people say online, like, oh, this, tastes, this little uh, tomato thing tastes really great with human meat. Not true. In fact, uh, well, let me read a little bit more for you. By the way, this is going to get a little grisly again, so skip here if you want to uh, skip all the gory details and just get to me eating this thing. Nalu Matua was the half-brother of Kuru Dua Dua, and only died a short time previous to our visit. His head wife took me to his grave, and lamenting his death, said that he might still be alive if he had only abstained from eating human flesh. For it appears that human flesh is extremely difficult to digest, and that even the strongest and most healthy men suffer from confined bowels for two or three days after a cannibal feast. Probably in order to assist the process of digestion, Bocola, as dead men's flesh is technically termed, is always eaten with an addition of vegetables. There are principally three kinds which, in Fijian estimation, ought to accompany bokola. The leaves of the malawaki, the taduo, and the borodina. The borodina is cultivated, and there are generally several large bushes of it near every burnisa, 
or stranger's house where the bodies of those slain in battle are always taken. The Borodina is a bushy shrub seldom higher than six feet with a dark glossy foliage and berries of the shape, size, and color of tomatoes. This fruit has a faint aromatic smell and is occasionally prepared like tomato sauce. The leaves of these three plants are wrapped around the bacola, as those of the taro are around pork, and baked with it on heated stones. Salt is not forgotten. So if you skipped ahead, the main takeaway here, this wasn't really used for the consumption of human meat, at least not according to the resource I was looking at. This was. This is the leaf of the plant. Now I have seen online some people swearing that this is what was used with the human meat, not this. It is the internet, so it's very likely that the information from that account kind of got mixed up along the way. Instead of being the leaf, it ended up turning into the fruit. However, I think that if you are using these leaves, that means you have this plant there. If you're having a big cannibal feast, I'm sure people did put this sauce on the human meat at some point. I mean, wouldn't you? So I'm going to give this leaf a taste. Uh, I've heard this can be used to make salads, and some people cook it like spinach. Let's see if it tastes any good. Um, it tastes like something you shouldn't be eating. But then again, I'm sure human meat does as well. So uh, maybe they do pair well together. It's acrid tasting, like sour in a bad way. And it gives like a little tingling on your tongue like you just licked a piece of asbestos. Maybe it's better cooked. I'm going to guess no, because like that taste is it's pretty gnarly. Uh, my guess is that this was not something that was used for flavor. This was something to accompany human meat to make it easier to digest. So medicinal. These are medicinal if you want to eat your enemies. So although I'm not going to cook the leaves, I am going to cook this. I'm not going to cook them any special way yet. First, I just want to cook them as basic as can be just to see if I can break down some of that bitterness. I'm going to cut these tomatoes as anyone should with this gigantic meat cleaver. So first, I'm going to take off all the little stems here. I'm not sure if they're edible or not. Some, uh, some species of solum are poison, so I want to be careful. I'm also going to get rid of this yellow one because this one um, is clearly unripe. I'm not sure if they're edible when they're unripe. They fill a half cup, so I don't have a whole ton here, but uh, I still think I'll be able to squeak out a interesting sauce. So I'm going to take these, I'm going to put them in a pot that just has like a little bit of water in it. All right, so I cooked them for uh, about 10 minutes or so. I added some water just so it wouldn't be uh, too dry because what I want to do is... Mmm, mmm. This has a smell that is very, very familiar. And I'm not sure exactly what it is. I want to say it's like a roasted squash kind of smell. Maybe a little carroty. Not like tomatoes. Not like tomatoes at all. Mmm. So I'm gonna try a sip of this. Bitter squash slurry. That's what's here. Me, I like bitter things okay, not like this. Uh, yeah, this is not, not pleasant. It's not like drinking tomato juice or anything. There's no sweetness to it. I mean, like, maybe vaguely the sweetness of, like, a like, uh, zucchini or something. And, um, no tartness to it. Not great. I don't believe this is how cannibals used this, though. I think that this was probably had some more spices in it. Now, I've seen some speculation online. Uh, one person had a cannibal chutney recipe. Were the cannibals making chutney? Probably not. We can't say for certain what kind of sauce they were making. 
what kind of things they added to this. However, I would like to make the, uh, the assumption that they were making ketchup. So that's what I'm going to do. In, wait for it, you hear that sound? That sound signals that it is time for everybody's favorite segment, will it catch up? So guys, will the cannibal tomato catch up? And if it does, will it taste good? We're gonna find out. So here are my ingredients. We've got uh, one tablespoon of light brown sugar, one fourth of a small onion, one clove of garlic. I've got some spices. I've got a pinch of ginger, pinch of celery seed, pinch of pepper, pinch of uh, mustard powder, probably a pinch of something else that I'm forgetting. And this is uh, a tablespoon of white vinegar. Okay, so I'm gonna take a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. I'm gonna take my onion, put that in. Garlic. Most ketchup recipes call for a little bit of spice, so I'm gonna take a slightly hot sweet pepper. This is a Brazilian starfish. That's gonna go in there. Spices. Well, we'll just wait until the onions turn translucent. I almost forgot the salt, and as you know, salt was not forgotten. So let's put a nice pinch in there. My cannibal's mush, and put this in here. Now I'm not dealing with tomatoes, which have more juice. I'm going to actually add some water. Mm-hmm. Kind of looks like tomato sauce. If you're a cannibal. Brown sugar goes in. Vinegar time. I put everything back in here because uh, my pot is far too shallow for this. So we're going to blend it up in here. Turn it to the pot. So I know it looks rather thick, but I'm going to let this reduce a little bit more. I've uh, reduced it down to almost nothing. We're probably at like less than a half cup now, even with all the things I added to it, which is good because now I'm going to strain it out and make even less. So this is going to go through this strainer here. You don't really need to do this, but it is nice to have a ketchup that doesn't have a bunch of crap in it. That's it. That's all there is. There's enough for one single serving of french fries right there, which uh, is all I need. All right, so it's been sitting in my fridge for a couple of days. It's nice and cold now. Probably mellowed out the flavors a little bit too. It looks like ketchup in consistency, but in color, it looks more like a honey mustard. It actually smells a little like ketchup, though. I don't have any french fries, so I'm just going to try a little bit on its own. Um, it actually does taste a little like ketchup, which is interesting, uh, just to show that you can probably make ketchup out of anything and it'll taste a little bit like ketchup. In uh, the Philippines, there's something called banana ketchup, where you take bananas and prepare it like you would prepare tomatoes to make ketchup, and it also tastes like ketchup. So I guess like the reason why ketchup tastes like ketchup is not really... Uh, just because of the tomatoes, it's because of everything else, the, the spices and the vinegar and the sugar and all that. It's not bad. It's all right. It does still have a little bit of bitterness to it, but, you know, the vinegar and the sugar and probably the cooking and putting in the fridge and all that definitely mellowed down that bitterness a lot more. Yeah, it tastes like if you were to take regular ketchup and tweak it a little bit, make it a little bit more bitter, and some of like that fruity taste that it would have from the tomato 
is gone. Instead, it's like a little bit more, I guess, vegetal. So, yeah, um, surprisingly, not that bad. I mean, I don't know why I'm telling you all of this, because obviously this is not something that anyone is ever going to do besides me, probably the only person ever to do this. And, um... You know what? It's actually not a bad way to utilize these fruits. So if you happen to be a weird person who is growing cannibal tomatoes in your backyard and you want to use them on for something, either put it on french fries or a burger or somebody you don't like, this is a, an okay way of doing it because uh, this is a way to take something that is very bitter and not very palatable and make it okay. And uh, I think that's all I have to say. So thanks again to Matt over at mattspeppers.com. Uh, if you want to grow this, what's wrong with you? But uh, you can go to the link in the description below and that will take you to Matt's website where I think he has seeds available. Otherwise, I will see you all next time. Take care. Bye-bye. I want to give a special shout out to AltPod and Smarter Every Day. They are mega patrons over on Patreon.com. Patreon is how this channel happens, it's how I can afford to do all the things that I do. So if you want to help me out by supporting the channel and getting some bonuses along the way, check out the description. I also have these shirts for sale, those are in the description as well. See you next time. Bye.